Hey guys, it's Katie at scrappingkatie.ctmh.com and today is day 11 of the Copa Cut Files 20 Days of Christmas Cut Files. So there are summer prompts and Christmas prompts. I will be doing the Christmas prompts and make sure you stay till the very end of this video in the still shots to see how I changed my layout up just a bit. Okay, so for day 11, it is about um, all about the wreath. So I have used the holly wreath cut file. Now the cut file actually is a complete wreath, but I um, just cut it in half. So I'm going to use it on just a part of my six by eight base. And then I have some cedar and pine stickers that I need to use up, uh, mainly these little foliage ones. And then I might use some of these. And then I've pulled out a white pines pattern paper. Um, I just love this side, but we're actually going to be using this side and I'm going to cut it down to a six by eight for my base page. So I've got that cut. And then as far as the cut file goes, um, you can see there's just like little white pieces, you know, from the core of the paper. And I usually like to hold, uh, to hide those. So I'm going to take some evergreen ink and one of my little ink blending tools and we are just going to um, basically ink all around those edges so you can't really see those white places. I also love it because it just kind of adds some depth and some darkness to the cut files. I love to do this on cardstock cut files. Um, it's almost like ink distressing, which if you are a follower of mine, you know that I do a lot. It's just such a simple technique that has just a great um, result. You can see there, that's where I kind of cut my file. And then this one, my blade got kind of hung up on. But no problem, we'll just hide that with an embellishment. You guys see me do that all the time. It's one thing I love about scrapbooking is I know that a lot of the girls that attend my classes and everything, they just want everything to be perfect. And it doesn't have to be um, because there's always room for embellishment or hiding those little things that you might view as mistakes. All right, so I have applied liquid adhesive to this little wreath part and I will attach it down. And they, really the only thing I'm worried about is these pieces as close to the edge as possible. And then of course that piece where my Cricut kind of messed up. Otherwise I can kind of manipulate it once I get it down. And I was kind of messy with my glue so it's kind of everywhere. But it's a busy piece of pattern paper in the background, so you can't really see those glue spots. So we've got that, and then I've got two photos. These are of our Christmas ornaments with our family photos. So I think those are going to go somewhere around there. And then I've pulled out that chipboard piece, and then of course I'm going to pull in some of these stickers. And I really am just, I'm just going to go with it tonight. Um, you know, I think you really can't go wrong with this cut file and with this pattern paper and these stickers. So I'm just going to get those adhered down. This, I'm almost wondering if... I want it okay so I'm going to put this one down and then I added some 3d foam tape to this one so I'll put it down And then I still don't know about that, but the good thing about 3D foam tape is if I decide to put that down, I can put that down later. And then the only other thing I was thinking about 
is maybe another one of these, but I think I might actually save that. So I want to journal right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add white ink kind of over that part. Um, of course, it would have been a whole lot better had I decided to do that earlier, but I didn't. So I'm just picking up my white ink and then I'm going to smear it all over the center of that with this mini blending tool. Okay, let's see how this goes. And you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna turn it all white. That's not what I want. I just want it to mute that pattern paper enough that when I come back in to journal, you can see my journaling just a little bit better. And it's okay if it goes over those green leaves a little. I think it almost gives it like a frosted look, you know? Um, in fact, I had that discussion with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago. If you like frosted Christmas trees or regular, I love the look of frosted, although my house and my decorations just don't call for it very much. And then the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some red bling to these holly berries. So even though these enamel gems are self-adhesive, I like to apply liquid adhesive just to make sure they're not going to move. And you could actually even use glue dots. And then I'm just going to, there's two shades, I don't know, or actually three, I don't know if you can see it. I'm not gonna use this darkest. So I'm going to try to use kind of this medium And then there are also different sizes. Let's peel that sticker back. And, then, and we're going to use this brighter color and see if it Kind of adds some interest, which I'm already thinking it does. And on this one, I'll just scoot it a little further in, a little closer. Okay, so I like that. And then now I just need to decide if I want to do that or not. So I have this gorgeous pattern paper from Cedar and Pine, and I am going to fussy cut some flowers. This is just a scratch piece, and um, I'm just going to fussy cut some of these larger flowers out, and then kind of tuck in and around that photo. Now, I always like to leave an edge around my fussy cut. It just seems to be more forgiving. Um, usually that edge is white. This one is a little bit different because it's got that gorgeous black background, but then there's just so many flowers and leaves on top of each other. So it's not really going to be a clean edge, but I still like the edge around it. So we can have that one there. I already have these two that I fussy cut off camera. And I'm thinking we can have that one. And maybe there, or maybe both of them right here. So, maybe need to cut just a little bit more off of this one. Yeah, so I think I like that. And then that is it for this layout. Super simple. Um, can't see the time right now, but I bet we're working on about 11 minutes from start to finish, which 
one of the main excuses I hear from people of why they don't scrapbook is it takes so much time. But if I can do an 11 minute video documenting a Christmas memory, then so can you. So there it is. I love the sparkle of those enamel gems. And then of course that gorgeous cut file from Copa Cut Files. So I will leave links down below to all the ladies and gentlemen playing along with the 20 days of Copa Cut Files, as well as links to any of the products that I use that might still be available on my website. And then don't forget to check out Virginia's link to her YouTube. She has a link to our Facebook group you can join. And then she's always doing deals on her cut files, so on and so forth. I do not get a cut of that. I just love to use her files and love to share the love with Virginia and, of course, all the ladies who are participating. There are some pretty talented ladies. So thank you so much for stopping by and watching. As always, if you liked what you saw, you can do something as simple as leaving a comment or even a thumbs up and it helps me out and I love reading your comments. And then if you aren't already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and then go ahead and sign up for notifications so you'll be alerted the next time I post a crafty video. Thank you and I will see you tomorrow.